Okay, so it's Math 7, Unit 6, Lesson 22. It's our last lesson in this unit, combining like terms, and we're on Part 3. Okay, the first one says, select all expressions that are equal to 8 minus 12 minus 6 plus 4. And so if we were to distribute this negative through, that's going to change what it looks like a little bit. So we could have 8 minus 12 minus 6 minus 4. All right, and that's a way to distribute that all the way through, which will work just fine. We can also rewrite things as addition and things like that. Let's just take a look at what our choices are. A, we have eight minus six, which is eight minus six, minus 12, minus 12, but we have a minus four and they have a plus four. So that's gonna be off, so we would say no to that one. Here's an eight minus 12, which matches minus six minus four, that works well. Here is eight minus 12, plus six plus four. That's just not gonna work out too well because this is a need to take away a negative 10 and that's adding a positive 10, not gonna work there. So that's a no. We have eight minus 12 minus six plus four. That's the same as number one, but those two are switched. So that's a no for that one. <laughs> and we have eight minus four minus 12 minus six. The order changed around, but it doesn't change what you're doing. That's gonna work just fine. For two, section two, it says X and Y's match each expression in column A with an equivalent expression from column B and be prepared to explain your reasoning. So we have some, um, some expressions here with parentheses and some over here where you've done some uh, reverse distributing, right? You pull something out of factoring there or maybe you've uh, re rewritten things on some of these other ones. Let's see what we have. If I was to rewrite this here, this can become a 9X plus a three X, there's no change there, nine and three, and the five Y and seven Y, no change there. Well, nine and three combine to make 12 X, and five and seven combine to make 12 Y, which means I could factor a 12 out, and I'm left with just X plus Y. So that one um, is going to be equivalent to the one right across from it, right there, no problem. This one. Um, let's distribute this minus throughout it and see what happens. If I distribute that, I have 9x plus 5y minus 3x minus 7y. All right, so do I see that anywhere here? I have 9x plus 5y minus 3x. I need a minus 3x and a minus 7y. So it's not that, not that. When I look over here, oh, look at that. There's 9x minus 3x plus 5y minus 7y. So those are all my parts there. So B is going to go with number 6. Here we can distribute again and we can distribute. So we have 9x plus 5y and that becomes a minus 3x and a minus times a minus comes a becomes a plus 7y. So that is 9, 5, minus 3, plus 7. So C is going to go here with 5. On this one, we have a 9x and a 3x, okay? We have a minus seven and a 5y. So those are staying in place, seems to match that. Here's a minus seven, minus seven, plus five, plus five. So no real change, just the order is changing between those two pieces there. That's gonna match that one right there. Over here, looking at what's left, I'm going to have to do some distributing or some factoring. So let's see, I have a 9 and a 3x, which makes 12x. I have a minus 7 and a minus 5, which is going to be a minus 12y. They both have a 12 in common, and what's left is x minus y. So that's going to go with choice number two. Uh, two. And finally here, we have a 9 minus a 3, which becomes a 6x, and a minus 7 minus 5, so 7 minus 5 becomes minus 12y. I could factor a 6 out of that, and I'm left with x minus 2y, which matches number 3 right there. So just doing some work there to figure out what, which ones are going to match up, and that's what you have. On the back next section, on section three, it's called seeing structure, structure and factoring. It's really about what do you see and can you kind of work some things out here. What I notice on this one is that I have three times 15, 
I have 4 times 15, and I have 5 times 15. All of these are multiplied by 15. So I could put 15 on the outside of this and then combine what they're being multiplied by. A 3 plus a 4 and minus a 5. So let's continue here. What is 3 plus 4? 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 minus 5 is 2. And 15 times 2 is 30. Now that's a pretty easy way to solve that. Rather than doing 3 times 15, it's going to be 45 plus 60 minus something else. That's a long, complicated problem. But by recognizing how things work together, we can get a pretty simplistic problem like that one. Here, we have everything has an x in it. So if we factored out the x, we could take an x out of everything, and what do we have left? We have 3 there, plus 4, minus 5. Now let's add things up. 3 plus 4 is 7, minus 5 is 2, so it becomes x times 2, which is the same as 2x. Right? Pretty nice. Over here, we have an x minus 2, an x minus 2, and an x minus 2. So we can factor the x minus 2 out of everything, and what do we have left? We're left with a 3 plus 4 minus 5. Again, it's at 3 plus 4 minus 5, which we know is 2. And that's times x minus 2. And we could leave it like that, or we could distribute it and go 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. So either one of those would work out just fine. Here we have this is the same as that one, and that one, and that one. So 5 over 2x plus 6 and a half is going to be uh, multiplied by, what do we have here? 3 plus 4 minus 5, which we know is 2 once again. So let's rewrite this as 5 over 2x plus, and I'm going to rewrite this as 2 plus 6 is 12 plus 1 is 13 over 2. And I do that because I know this combines to make 2. And so when I distribute, 2 times 13 over 2 is equal to 13, and 2 times 5 over 2 is equal to 5x. So I can get 5x plus 13, and that's going to work there. So the point here is that combining like terms is a useful strategy that you'll see again and again in lots of mathematical expressions and work that you're going to do. So that's what we're looking at today and throughout a lot of this unit, or a lot of last part, part of the unit. Let's take a moment to pause, do our homework, and let's check that together. All right, here's our homework, our last one for this unit. Jada says, I can tell that this plus this plus minus this equals zero just by looking at it. Is she correct? Well, we know they all have the x plus five in common, right? Which means I could factor the x plus five out. So she's looking then at this stuff and making a statement about what does she see. She has a negative two-thirds plus a four minus a ten-thirds, okay? So from that, how would you get that times x plus five equals zero? Well, let's turn the four into a common denominator. So four can be rewritten as 12 over three, because 12 over three reduces to four. So now, because it's a common denominator, I can think about negative 2 plus 12 minus 10. So here is 12 positive, and I have a minus 2 and a minus 10. 10 and 2 combined make 12, and it's a minus, so that cancels out. This whole thing becomes 0. And 0 times any number, whatever that x plus 5 is, is still equal to 0. So is she correct? Yes, she is correct. Number two, we just need to decide if this is equivalent to that. All right, so we're going to kind of combine terms and do some factoring to see if it's equivalent or not. So here, we have 3 minus 2, which is 1, and then 1 plus 0.5 is 1.5, and the variable stays with it. Is that equivalent? Yes, it is equivalent. Here, we can see we have x plus 3 over there. Let's go ahead and do some factoring. Okay, so we can distribute or we could factor a different way. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, factor out x plus 4, and then that's going to multiply by 3 minus 2. 
Well, three minus two is equal to one, right? So all you really have is x plus four. Now notice that is not equivalent. So it's not equivalent because this is x plus four and this is x plus three. To make it equivalent, that would have to turn into x plus four in order for it to match that side over there. It just doesn't, okay? You can also change this side if you wanted to make it match by maybe subtracting one to make it match that side, okay? Over here, we have x plus four, x plus five, so we really can't combine those. So we're gonna distribute things out. So this becomes six x, and six times four is plus 24. Negative two times x is negative two x, and negative two times five is negative 10. We'll combine some stuff here. So six x minus two x, becomes a 4x, and 24 minus 10 is minus 14. In this case here, I can factor out a two still, so take a two out of that, that leaves me with a 2x there, and taking a two out of that leaves me with a seven there. So I have two times two x, um, I have minus seven, oh, sorry, it should be plus 14, plus seven there. So that does match, it is equivalent. Very important to get your signs right, right? I had 24 minus 10 and I wrote minus 14, but 24 minus 10 is positive 14, which makes that a positive seven, which makes it equivalent. And finally, we have x plus four, x plus four, x plus four. So we know that's on the outside here. And then that's gonna multiply by three minus two plus 0 0.5. Now three minus two plus 0 0.5, we know from above is 1.5. So this is 1.5 times x plus four. So this is also not gonna be equivalent, not equivalent, and that's because here we have 1.5 and it needs to be multiplied by x plus four in order to become equivalent, and it's missing that part there. All right, number three. For each situation, write an expression for the new balance using as few terms as possible. Okay, so we're just writing an expression, we're not solving it. So a checking account has a balance of negative $126.89. A customer makes two deposits, one three and a half times the other. So you're gonna deposit some amount and then deposit three and a half times that same amount and then withdraws $25. So now let's rewrite this with the fewest terms possible. So we're gonna combine the negative 126 and the negative 25. Those combine to make a negative $151.89 by combining them because they have the same signs. And here we have our x and our three and a half x. So that becomes, that's like a one, becomes four and a half x. So the expression we're gonna have is right there. The next one, a checking account has a balance of $350. A customer makes two withdrawals. That means it's taking things out. One, $50 more than the other one. So they're gonna take out something, and then they're gonna take out X minus uh, X plus 50 more. So whatever that was, and $50 more than the last time. And then they make a deposit of 75. Let's distribute this negative real quick. So 350 minus X minus X minus 50 plus 75. So let's do the whole numbers. 350 minus 50 is 300 plus 75 is 375. And we have a minus X plus another minus X. So it's minus 2X. And so that becomes our simplified expression. 375 minus 2X there. Bring on to our last page for the day, for the unit, for all these things. Here we go. It says Tyler is using distributed property on the expression, that one. Here is his work. All right, so it starts there. He turns that to a negative four. Okay, adds, makes that a plus and a minus. Okay, so we're turning the subtractions into add the opposite. And then he brings in the nine. I can see he multiplies that, distributes that, great. And then, uh-oh, what happened right here? What happened to the four? The four should be distributed over here with a six, and it wasn't. Uh-oh, there's a problem right there. So that's our problem right there. May thinks Tyler's answer is incorrect. She says, if expressions are equivalent, then they are equal for any value of the variable. 
why don't you try to substitute the same value for x in all the equations and see where they are not equal. So her point is, just plug a number in to see does it actually work. If you put the number one in each of these things, they should all be exactly the same, which it's not. So where did he make the error? Well, the error is made right here in step three. What did he do wrong? He did not distribute the negative four by multiplying it with the negative six. That's what he forgot to do there. So to correct his work, we can do that there. It'd be nine minus four times five X minus six. If you distribute there, we go, that becomes a negative 20 X and that becomes a positive 24. We can combine these whole numbers, 24 and nine, which becomes 33 minus 20 X. And that's where we would stop at right there. Okay, and number five, it's a great problem here. All right, if 11 plus x is positive, but four plus x is negative, what is, the, what is one number that, could, that x could be? All right, so how do we solve this? It says it's a review from previous lesson. Now, I don't remember doing this exactly, but I know this is this current lesson, so we're probably gonna be using in, uh, inequalities. So let's take a look at the first one. So 11 plus x is positive. That means 11 plus x has to be greater than, right, greater than zero. Why greater than zero? Because a number, anything greater than zero is gonna be positive. So can I solve that? Sure I can. So 11 plus x, uh, give some more room here, need some more space. So 11 plus x is greater than zero. If I subtract 11 from both sides, x has to be something greater than negative 11. But four plus x is negative. So four plus x, it has to be less than zero because it's negative. Subtract four, subtract four, x is less than negative four. So in terms of a number, what could we say? Here's our x. x is going to be less than negative four, right? There's that one. But we know that x is also greater than negative 11. So it's gonna be some number between 11, negative 11, and negative four. And that's what X is gonna be. Kinda cool. All right, and the next one, we have negative three Y, or three plus Y is positive. So it's to be greater than zero. And we also have negative nine plus Y is negative. So less than zero. Let's see what we get. We add three, add three, Y is greater than three. We add nine, add nine, Y is less than nine. So what do we know? Well, if this is our y value, we could go like this and like this. We know y is less than nine, but we also know that y is greater than three. So for our number, it's gonna be somewhere between three and nine, and that would work for that one. Our last one, we have negative five plus z is positive, so it's greater than zero. And we have negative six plus z is negative, so it's less than zero. I'll add five add five, so z is greater than five. I'll add six, add six, so z is less than six. So what does that tell me about z? z is going to be greater than five, right? z is greater than five, and it's also less than six. So it's some number in between. It could be like five and a half. All right, so kind of fun little problem there. Hope that helps you out in that unit. And good luck with the upcoming test, and we'll see you in the next unit.